Hello, welcome back to Urban X Files. My name is Key, and today is a continuation of stories from outer space. Do UFOs exist? Now, in 1963, a scientist known as Fritz Werner was working on a specialist nuclear test in Arizona in May of that year. Werner was asked to go on a specialist assignment. <clears throat> He was flown to Phoenix and then he was taken by bus with a group of other men to a destination northwest somewhere of that city. And um, the men were told not to talk to each other and they were also told when they unloaded from the vehicle that they were shown a crash site and when it claims that what he saw was a 30 foot wide metal disc protruding from the desert sand. He was asked to calculate the speed of the impact and says that during his time on the site he also saw the body of a four foot tall creature wearing what is described as a silver suit in this medical tent that they had on site. Now. He was, um, he was taken back to Arizona and he was made to sign a non-disclosure agreement and in 1957 a crashed UFO actually resulted in physical evidence being put to the public domain which was on the 18th of, the, uh, 18th of September sorry a journalist named um, Abraham Suid who worked at a um, a major Brazilian paper called O Globo had received a very odd letter. It was it was unsigned, but he, he was he was said to be from a man who had seen he'd been fishing near the town of um, it was, I think it was in São Paulo and saw this bizarre flying disc almost crash into the sea. Um, the anonymous man said the craft was travelling at incredible speeds and although it missed the water, exploded in mid-air and the man managed to collect fragments of this strange vessel um, which, which he included in his letter. Now these pieces were sent for official testing and the Brazilian Agricultural Ministry declared it was from an unusual pure magnesium. The results of the experiments carried out by the Brazilian Army and Navy were kept classified, undisclosed to anyone, not even other governments. But unlike more remote areas, the great advantage of UFO researchers have when investigating odd incidents in America is that there are often plenty of witnesses. Now, on the 9th of December of 1965, hundreds of people saw a bizarre object streaking across the skies over Ohio and Pennsylvania. And some of the witnesses were airline pilots who, whose planes were shaken by the turbulence that was created by this unusual speed from this strange craft and for six minutes people watched what they thought was a meteorite travel from the northwest to the southwest before it seemed to explode in fact the objects crashed into a wooded area in the town of Kecksburg and had started a small fire the um, the object crashed near a forest which caused as I say a small fire so they had sent out um, police and fire authorities that they um, to deal with this fire but they were unable to reach the site because they were turned away by a military team who had already been on site um, now they immediately descended on the area and witnesses have said that they had later um, seeing the armed unit load this strange metallic object onto a flatbed lorry 
which was then covered in a tarpaulin to disguise this load. Now, undoubtedly the most unsettling UFO crash in subsequent government reaction is reported to have occurred in northern Mexico, in the state of Chihuahua. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm terrible at pronouncing things. And UFO investigators have obtained documents which they claim to reveal that an unidentified object that was tracked by two US uh, defense radars on the 24th of August of 1974. The object seemed to be entering the atmosphere from orbit and was heading towards the United States but it somehow veered off at the last minute and had disappeared from sight over Mexico. At the same time, Mexican authorities said a light aeroplane had been lost over the sea. The next day, Mexican search and rescue teams hunting for the downed plane started reporting that they had found the crash site and the two aircraft seemed to have been involved when they transmitted the message that claimed the second appeared to be a metallic and circular shape. So all the broadcasts were ordered to cease at that moment because they'd found something that they did not want made public. Now, UFO enthusiasts believe the US government had heard these messages and immediately organized a response team. The US government strongly urged Mexico to accept their help. And when the local authorities ignored the offer, they decided to go in anyway, as the United States do. The Mexican salvage squad had already loaded the two aircraft onto a truck and were heading south. But by the time the US forces traveling in helicopters had caught up with them, a terrible tragedy had occurred. All the people with the convoy had somehow been mysteriously killed. So the American team wearing protective clothing took charge of the suspect air vehicle. They ferried it slung underneath a cargo helicopter and took it to a secret industrialization site in the United States. There is no absolute proof of a UFO activity, but investigators continue to claim that the more and more official evidence is being revealed each time, each day, week, month, with the research that they're doing, more and more stuff's coming to light. Now, the truth may be out there, but it could certainly be hidden in the vaults of some government agency. Who knows? I definitely believe the government are keeping things from us. Um, whether it is because they don't want to cause mass panic, which is understandably true. Um, you know, you've gone and lived your life waking up every day, going downstairs, having your breakfast, and sending the kids into school, going to work, and then as each day passes, the same thing. You know, some people go to church on a Saturday or Sunday, they say the prayer, they go to a mosque, they go to another cathedral, whatever it is, and then they believe in heavenly God and spirits, angels, and then it, UFOs come into the picture. Can you imagine the panic? But I do think that now, as of 2021, we are living in a world where a lot more is sort of accepted you know, with the use, as I've mentioned before in previous videos, that with, with the internet, everything is accessible there and then. If you want to find something out, you can just say, ask Alexa or you can ask Google and you will instantly have your answer. Obviously, some things are kept hidden, as in Google Maps, we'll find there's certain things that are hidden or blanked out on Google Maps. Now, you know, obviously the government will say these are military um, dwellings so they can't be revealed to the public but there's more to it the also I'd like to say that the advancement in technology that we have now has has come on I know technology advances fast all the time but if you were to go back over the last 10 15 years and see how much technology has changed in the 15 
to 20 years prior to that. I mean, at the moment we've got autonomous cars. You know, Tesla are, are building cars that have batteries that last for hours and you know can take you on 500 mile journeys um so you know the technology now is phenomenal you know communications are instantaneous we've got whatsapp we can literally message anyone anywhere in the world for free on whatsapp we can video chat anyone anywhere in the world instantly all for free that's how fast technology has changed and increased it's phenomenal so this does give more credence to the theory that aliens or something definitely does exist as what they've found and they've had reversed sort of technology uh, or reversed engineered it does make us question what what is it that they know um and i will cover the subject of bob lazar who is the alien guy if you will he he's he's admitted that he worked in roswell he's admitted that he's seen things that had changed his life forever he'd seen a colleague literally vaporized now although although bob lazar has come out with um with these these claims um you do have like agencies like cia who sort of dismiss this and say they have nothing no idea what he's talking about but some of the stuff that he says is stuff that how it how it's explained and how how it's put forward you can't deny so this. i've interrupted this video because i wanted to show you the autopsy of um, one of the aliens supposedly from roswell i when doing the research to this video i found this and i found it pretty interesting so i um i'm going to include some of it in today's video so what you're about to see next is the actual footage of the autopsy i won't show you the full thing because it'll go on for too long but i before watching it i was unsure what to think but after watching it and having some of a um, medical background i have um i have to say it's pretty um pretty pretty convincing um how they've done it so what do you think let me know your one thing i did notice which i found a bit strange was how human-like the feet was there's also people's theories that progeria is also known as Hutch is also known as Hutchinson Guilford syndrome and it's a very rare progressive disease in which it seems where children age really fast. So there's theories of that it was said it's an autopsy of of one of these um, children. Personally I don't think this is the case. Um it doesn't doesn't have that especially with the um the fact that it's got no genitals, I think is what questions people's um feelings of authenticity in this and as you see there you can see the corded phone now apparently they were not produced in 1947 when this is supposedly taking place um i know there's also other people who said that the guys who created this film in 1995 done it in a london flat um but i think it's a bit too uh from when you see the doctor's are examining as if they were doing a normal autopsy it seems that they would have to have had very um, a lot of knowledge in in of the human anatomy and how they would um, examine a body which they've done like this and here as you can see um, the guy is manipulating the leg the knee of the supposed alien body now here does actually it, it does seem very real you know that the damage like that was seen in, in some of the evidence that was captured for um area 51 you know the um the aliens that were you know said to have crashed on that site so it does really make you question now here as you can see he's moving his hands he is giving an example of where he's going to cut 
when he makes his incision to open the chest cavity and they have a look inside of the alien's body. In this clip that we see here, you can see the doctor with his scissors where he's cutting away at the flesh of the alien. What he's doing there, he's taking samples of tissue to be analyzed. I, um, so he's removing bits of um, any of the metals that was found or tissue fabric, bone fabric, um, all things like that that would um, be able to give an insight in the biology of this alien. Now in this clip we see he takes the scalpel and he proceeds to cut and make his incisions where he is opening the chest cavity. He will open it down the center of the rib cage and he will expose if it was to have a heart, his lungs and the other um, organs that humans also have. So this, the, this that you see here is, is what makes me seem more to believe that it is more than just a couple of guys who staged this in their London flat because the way they cut and open the body it does look like you would need to have some surgical background and the way he's cutting away the flesh to expose the inside here he's trimming it back Again, this is how a normal doctor would perform an autopsy. So we can see here now that he's um, fully exposed the internal of the supposed alien, where he proceeds to remove um, what could be their organs. It's a little hard to see given the age of this film. I, um, you can see he's cutting away there to remove what could potentially be the heart. I'm not too sure. Um, but it, it, it's very, very, very questionable because it's very well set up. Even, even in the previous um, clip where you see the blood trickle down the rest of the um, alien cadaver. It's a very, very um, particularly done fake if it is a fake. Don't forget, this is supposed to be the Area 51 autopsy, so it's um, it's very, very clever. Now we see the uh, doctor removing what is an organ of some sort. I don't know whether it was the heart or the lungs or whatever it would be uh, for an alien. It's really, really hard to sort of to analyze given given the quality of it and the fact that it's in black and white. Um, so they've opened the chest cavity. Now it looks like a, they are removing any of the intestines, if it was to have them, any of its stomach contents. I, uh, it's it's hard, to, hard to say because it doesn't, it, although it looks human-like, uh, it doesn't have the full characteristics of a normal human being, being it has no genitals. Um, so it, it does make me wonder what it is that they are supposedly removing from the cadaver of the alien. Now in this next clip you see the uh, surgeon removing something from the eye. Now when I was looking into this and it was questioned, people were asking questions about this film. Um, now they explained it as like a membrane that we have on our eyes now. But the membrane is supposed to be something that protects the alien's eyes from various light sources like the sun or wherever planet it's supposedly from. Um, it's like, it's very similar to how we have camels where they have three eyelids and three sets of eyelashes. What we see now here is the doctor proceeding to open up the scalp. He's cutting around the top of the alien's head and he will fold the skin back to expose the brain. As you can see now, the doctor's trimming back the remainder of the scalp to expose the skull, which he will then use an actual saw to open the top of his head. This is exactly how they do 
autopsies today, what they all use an electric saw um, to open the bone. So as you can see in this clip here, this is where they are sawing with a tenon saw the top of the skull to um, expose the alien's brain. It's uh, pretty grim and I know it's not a nice thing to see. Uh, just to show the authenticity or the supposed authenticity of this supposed alien autopsy. Um, so this, this I would imagine how is it would be conducted sometime in the 1940s or 50s. So as I say, it does seem pretty real given uh, how it's done. So in this part of the clip, we can see here, it looks like they are removing the exposed brain of this alien and placing it upon a plate, which would be measured, weighed and um, checked. But that does not look like a human type brain. So it does, it's such a, it's just a hard thing to decide whether this is an authentic leaked autopsy as it was not part of any film or anything like that if it, it, it was either conducted during the autopsy or staged by putting in a lot of work to make this short clip. Do you think this video that you've just watched is a genuine alien autopsy or is it a very very clever hoax because this was either made in the 1940s when they found the alien or it was created using some experienced either I want to say surgeons or actors as surgeons because the way that they conduct this autopsy is very authentic if it was to be a human or an animal whatever the case may be it's just so un i just cannot decide how true this is or if it's a very good hoax what do you think do you think it's real or do you think it's fake please let me know because it's uh it's crazy so yes i hope you enjoyed this um video today it's off the subject of ghosts but it still is paranormal anything that is not normal i like to cover so I hope you enjoyed it either way. Anyway, enough of me rambling on. This is another video of things from outer space. Hope you enjoyed this story and more UFO stuff will be in the next coming videos. So if you do enjoy this, please give me your uh, feedback in the comment section. Feel free to smash the like button so I know that you're enjoying this type of stuff. And uh, most importantly, I want to thank you all for watching, especially if you made it this far. And those of you who hit the like button, those of you who comment and subscribe, truly thank you. Take care, and I will see you all in the next video. Peace.